Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at Atalanta's tactics under Gian Piero Gasparini in Tactics Explained. Make sure to subscribe if you are new and smash the like button and turn the notification bell on. This video is brought to you with Coral. Without further ado, let's get this party started. Gian Piero Gasparini was appointed as manager of Atalanta on the 14th of June. 2016, but began his coaching career in 1994 as part of Juventus' youth setup. His first managerial role was at Crotone in Serie C, getting promoted to Serie B in his first season. Next came Genoa, where he gained promotion in his first season, this time to Serie A. Five successful years in Northern Italy saw him be approached by Internazionale, but he was sacked after five games for failing to win a game. This was followed by two spells at Palermo in the 2012-13 season, where he was replaced by Giuseppe Sanino and got sacked, then was eventually rehired and eventually replaced again by Sanino, all in the space of six months. Another three-year spell at Genoa followed before moving to Atalanta, taking them from 13th to 4th in his first season and securing Champions League football for the first time in the club's history by finishing third last season, with Gasparini appointed as honorary citizen for Bergamo in September 2019. Tactically, Gasparini has largely favoured a 3-4-1-2 or a 3-4-3 throughout his career. And before Atalanta, his most notable side was his 2008-9 Genoa team, which featured the likes of Thiago Motta and Diego Melito. In fact, this side saw huge praise from Jose Mourinho after Genoa held his interside 0-0 at the San Siro. Gasparini is the coach that makes it the most difficult for me. Every time I change tactics, he adapted. And that was one of the most spectacular nil-nil draws for anyone who loves football. Under Gasparini, Atalanta have largely set up in a 3-4-1-2, but their front three are often versatile forwards that can be deployed in a flat three. But one of the main reasons Gasparini is enjoying his most successful spell as a manager is perhaps he's a bit more, a little bit more pragmatic than he has been, often shown in his team selection. Most frequently, Gasparini goes with his best front three, often a flat three with Gomez, Ilicic, or Zapata. But against tougher opposition, he distinctly goes with a 2-1 with an extra midfielder drafted in, usually Mario Pasalic, for extra protection offered up by leaving just two players up top for the counter rather than three. But Atalanta's system is largely based around positional rotation and man-to-man -man pressing to facilitate both the offense and defensive game. I describe Atalanta more as a modern, high-pressing German side than a more traditional, deliberate Italian. And you can see this in the number of tackles they attempt per game, which is up there with the best sides in the Champions League this season. Jurgen Klopp famously once said, no playmaker in the world can be as good as a good counter-pressing situation. And you can see Gasparini agrees with the Liverpool boss. Without the ball, Atalanta defend in a 5-4-1 and deploy a really aggressive high press in a man-to-man -man scheme, which as you imagine, sees them match their opponent's shape often with a centre-back as a safety player. They press in a manner that sees their cover shadow block the pass into the player behind them, effectively blocking the passing lane. So if possession is with the left centre-back, the left forward is marking the right back, and the pass is played to the right centre-back. The left forward will press the centre-back whilst cutting the lane to the right back. Whilst this takes longer to press, it allows Atalanta to press effectively, often forcing opponents to kicking long and forcing them to lose possession. Not only do they press when out of possession, but when they also lose it, they look to counter press aggressively, a lot like Bayern Munich's 2013 Champions League winners. This makes them incredibly dangerous on the counter attack. They frequently turn the ball over in their medium block near halfway with their aggressive setup. That 3-4-3 we mentioned before transitions to that 5-4-1. Atalanta invite their opponents to play through the middle. Then they snap into life in a super man-to-man -man aggressive scheme. We saw this in their 7-0 win over Torino, with the move that led to the corner for their second goal. At this point, Torino had possession for a while, with Atalanta squeezing them out from their low block into their mid block and looking to invite Torino to play through the middle. Lukic is in possession, but is being pressured by Darun. Atalanta have their man-to-man -man scheme set, with all four players available 
that are ready to receive a forward pass. Man marked. The Torino man rolls the pressure and then plays forward, but his teammate has Toloi on his back. He tries to evade that pressure, but runs into a challenge on his second touch from Freuler. As Atalanta break with a 4v3 created by that man-to-man -man pressing system. Ilicic drives centrally, plays it to Gomez, who takes a touch and picks out Freuler, who hits the post and his rebound goes out for the corner, which is scored by Gusens to make it 2-0. This goal not only highlights Atalanta's doggedness in defense, but their ability to force the mistake and create quick overloads with lightning breaks. But what's also very, very interesting is when Atalanta are pressed themselves and they can't get the ball out, they look to clear to the channels and then start a counter-pressing system, a trend we've seen a lot in modern football. Their commitment to this pressing attitude has made Atalanta such a dangerous team without possession as a mispaced pass or miscontrolled pass can lead to the Missouri regaining possession before breaking in mass numbers. A goal that really sums Atalanta up in this regard is an opener in the Champions League last 16 first leg against Valencia. Valencia in possession with Daniel Vaz. Vaz plays it centrally to Guadez who lays it back to Pendogbia. The switch to Gaia is on but Hatabor moves to intercept. The ball is played and he cuts it out. Two headers see Palomino recover possession. They work it to Gomez wide left who carries waiting for a run. Hattenborough makes it and Gomez shifts it before picking him out to finish. 12 seconds from Atalanta regaining possession from their man-to-man -man press before the ball is in the back of the net. As Gomez crosses, Atalanta have five players in the box and two on the edge, seven players forward for a counter-attack and this isn't a rare occurrence. Atalanta commit a lot of bodies forward on the break. But let's talk about when they've got the ball. In possession, Atalanta look to build from the back using short, quick combinations. Often, their wing backs stay wide and move high, whilst the defensive midfielders, often Foyler or Darun, drop either offering themselves up centrally or moving into the wing back positions, whilst the two forward options drop into midfield, resembling a 3-2-4-1. What's interesting is when they're building, Atalanta often play higher risk short passes to commit pressers, giving options in space slightly more time to pick out a forward pass. In general, their wide forwards either play as a flat three or as a one two and look to drift wide and drop deep creating passing triangles between the centre midfielder, the wing back and the forward, whilst the outside centre back step up to create the triangle between that centre mid, the wing back and a centre back, whilst opening up a direct passing lane to the forward. This allows Atalanta not only to overload a flank, to easily progress the ball, but the players to rotate positions, pulling defenders out of position to create space for their teammates to play forward. If they can't find a gap to play through, Atalanta will either use a short or medium pass to work the ball to the other flank or directly look for a long switch to try and catch the opposition out before they can reset. But Atalanta's outside centre-backs don't just hold their position at the base. As we mentioned before, positional rotation is a key element of Gasparini's tactics. We often see it in ball progression where the centre-back will play wide and make a forward run. The third man run, often getting a return pass and then driving Atalanta in between the opposition's lines. In the final third, Gasparini's men tend to attack in a lopsided 3-2-3-2 with Alejandro Papu Gomez in the hole as the side's playmaker. Joseph Ilicic pulling into the right channel where he can operate as an inside forward, whilst Duvan Zapata uses physicality and strength to lead Atalanta's line as a target man, where he looks to link with moves or finish them off. Ladea tend to occupy the half spaces in the final third, and by overloading the flanks, they can use their short passing combinations to get the forwards on the ball who can look to get a shot away or create for a teammate. What's interesting is when Atalanta's centre backs join the attack in the final third, they often make decoy runs, pulling the attention away from the real threats. But how Atalanta attack largely depends on which forwards have the ball. Attacking down the right, Ilicic will likely pick it up. As an inside forward, the Slovenian tends to pick it up wide right, looking to cut onto his left foot to get shots away or drive and beat his opponents, getting to the byline and then picking out a teammate. In Serie A this season, no Atalanta player directly contributes to more shots per game than Ilicic, and he's currently the side's top scorer in the competition. But when Atalanta are attacking down that left-hand side, Papu Gomez often picks it up. 
As a side's primary playmaker, Gomez tends to operate a little bit deeper than Ilicic. He'll still receive wide, but from the starting position, he looks to be a little bit more creative. Either looking to move into the hole, where he can play the ball into the striker's feet to combine with Ilicic or to get a shot away, or he'll carry wide before picking out a teammate with a pass or crossing deep to the back post. Papu Gomez's excellent close control and small stature means he's difficult to dispossess when he's jinking and changing directions as he waits for his teammates to make a run before picking them out. He's the heartbeat of Gasparini's Atalanta. In fact, since Gasparini's appointment as Atalanta manager, no player's been directly involved in more goals than Gomez. One of the things that makes Atalanta so dangerous in the final third is the combination between the decision-making of their forwards. Of their usual front three, Gomez and Ilicic are 32 and Zapata is 28. The experience they've gathered over the years often sees them making the right decision at the right time, either getting their deliveries away or recycling possession, which somewhat protects Atalanta's high-risk, high-reward system, whilst allowing them to create something out of nothing. A really great example of this is Ilicic's third goal against Torino, Atalanta with a free kick inside Torino's half. Freuler gives it to Gomez, who waits before popping it through to Zapata in space. The Colombian holds off the pressure, lays it back for Gomez to pick out Ilicic to get his hat-trick. A great goal that comes from very little, but uses the front three's intelligence to link up with great effect, requiring just nine touches from the trio. What makes Atalanta such an exciting team to watch is their general disregard for protecting their own goal. And when they've got a chance to score, they'll go for it. Across Europe's top five leagues, only Bayern Munich and PSG have scored more league goals this season. And no team have taken more shots per game than the Bergamo side. Atalanta are tremendously exciting and I personally will be keeping a very close eye on Atalanta and Gasparini to see what's next for the pair. But anyway guys, what do you think? Have you been impressed by Gasparini's Atalanta and how far do you think they'll go in this season's Champions League? Let me know in the poll above and the comments below. I've been Sam Mandy. we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?